Hello and welcome to another Off The Shelf Board Game Review. This week we're going to be looking at a game called Viceroy. Now if you're looking at the cover for this game, you're going to notice that the game covers in Russian and that's because this game has not made it to this side of the pond yet. So I ask if, after you're done watching this video and what you've seen is something that intrigues you, I suggest you go over to the Board Game Geek forums for Viceroy, leave some comments letting them know how interested you are in this game, or contact Hobby World directly and I'll leave the link for that in the show notes. Now the reason why I say that is because Viceroy is not available in English and the company that produces Viceroy is basically testing the waters right now. They're also going to be showing the game at Essen, so also if you want to see some more gameplay and you're going to Essen, stop by the booth for Hobby World and check out Viceroy the game at their booth. Right now Hobby World is basically testing the waters to see if there's enough interest for Viceroy the game and of course if there's enough interest they're going to produce the game over on this side of the pond and if there's not enough interest it's probably just going to stay over in Europe and a lot of people are not going to enjoy this very very fantastic game but I'll get into that when I get into the final review for Viceroy the board game. Viceroy is a strategy game in which players are political nobles trying to build their political pyramid of influence and power in a way that's going to give them the most influence which will give them the most victory points at the end of the game. Players are going to have to hire these nobles through an auctioning mechanic and depending on where they place these nobles, these characters, and these various people in the pyramid powder is going to judge exactly which kind of abilities they're going to gain from gaining the loyalty of these characters for their political power plays. Of course it's not quite as simple as that because as players are going to play they can play cards that are going to change the various laws for the game which is going to give them different victory points based on what kind of law cards they play to add to their own personal pyramid and change the rules again trying to get the greatest amount of victory points at the end of the game. Viceroy is played out over 12 turns and each turn starts off with an auction where each player is going to be bidding gems to see which one of these characters they're going to add to their hand of cards and then once they bid for these characters, they're going to have to pay more money to get these characters added to their pyramid of, again, political power. The real challenge for Viceroy comes in the fact that you have to agonize over exactly where you're going to play these characters in your pyramid of power because they're going to give you different benefits depending on exactly where they're played. And once they're played, they can't be moved unless a law card allows you to break that rule. So if you play this card all the way up here, he may give you the ability to draw extra cards, which may be something you need on this turn. Or he may be able to give you free resources for the rest of the game. If that's what you need, you need to play them on the bottom of your pyramid. You need to make these tough decisions constantly and decide whether you need resources, which are very tight and very, very hard to keep in stock while trying to keep your defense up because there's always a chance that your opponents are raising their offense to try to hamper your total victory points at the end of the game. Can you most efficiently build your power infrastructure Work the laws to your greatest advantage and score the most victory points at the end of the game. That is Viceroy, the card game. Before I show you how to play Viceroy, the game, you need to understand exactly what you're trying to achieve when you're playing Viceroy, the game itself. Of course, Viceroy is a victory point game, so how do you exactly achieve those victory points? Well, there's a couple different ways to achieve those victory points. One of the easiest ways to achieve victory points in the game is by playing law cards and basically doing exactly what those law cards do, and they'll give you victory points or various other benefits. You can also get victory points by playing cards that just give you victory points towards the end of the game. You can gain victory points by getting a complete set of a gear, a scroll, and a shield. For every complete set of those you have, it's going to be worth a certain amount of victory points. You can also lose victory points if your opponents happen to have swords and you don't have shields to stop those swords from doing damage to your victory point total at the end of the game. Additionally, you can score extra victory points for getting tokens that are going to give you bonus victory points for every scroll you happen to have as part of your empire. You can also gain victory points for having completed circles of a certain color. And what does that mean? Well, now I need to show you exactly how you build your pyramid of power in Viceroy. In Viceroy, every single player is going to be building their own personal pyramid of power. You're not building a communal pyramid that everybody's working on together. Each player is playing their own personal pyramid and they're getting their benefits and their victory points and all the other things they're getting from building their own personal pyramid. On each player's turn, they're going to play cards as part of their pyramid. And you want to play these cards in a certain way that they're going to give you ben the benefits that you need at that time. And additionally, when you're building these pyramids, if you can make it so that you're making a solid color gem of one single color, it's going to give you some extra bonus victory points at the end of the game 
Additionally, especially if you have these tokens in play that happen to match that same color, you're going to gain even more victory points at the end of the game. There are two different kinds of cards on Vice for the game. First, you have your law cards, and the other kind of cards you have are your character cards. Now, none of these cards will ever give you any bonuses or benefits until they're part of your pyramid, so cards in your hand do absolutely nothing. Now, the important thing to understand is that character cards, unlike law cards, are going to give you different powers or benefits depending on exactly which level of the pyramid you place that character card on, and that's a one-time benefit, and you can't move these characters unless you play a law card that allows you to do so. So, for example, the Hermit character himself, if the Hermit is played on the very first level of your pyramid, the benefit he's going to give you is going to give you three gems of any single color you choose that are going to go in your inventory. And I'll get into this in a few minutes, but all character player inventories about how many gems each player has is hidden from other players behind a shield. But again, I'll get into that in just a few minutes, just giving the basics for the game. So if we play the Hermit on the first level of your pyramid, you're going to get three resources of your choice in any color you want. If you play the Hermit on the second level of your pyramid, he's going to give you a single gear, which is going to be a permanent gear until the end of the game that could be worth victory points at the end of the game. Now, if you happen to play the Pyramid or the Hermit on the third level of your pyramid, he's going to give you a bonus, which is going to give you plus three for every single scroll you have in your empire at the end of the game. Or if you just happen to play the Hermit as part of the fourth level of your pyramid, He's going to give you a different advantage. What he's going to do is he's going to allow you to gain extra scrolls, which could be worth victory points at the end of the game as long as you have these tokens on your pyramid to give you those victory points. Each player's pyramid can be as wide as they want, but no pyramid can be more than five levels high. And the cost to get these characters into play or these laws into play is based on exactly where you're playing these cards as part of your pyramid. Now, law cards, no matter where you play them on your pyramid, have zero cost, which is a nice benefit of a law card. But character cards themselves, they all have a cost, and that cost is going to be represented by exactly where on the pyramid you decide to play those character cards when you play them. For example, the warlock character, if he's played on the very first level of your pyramid, he would cost one red gemstone to play him on the first level of your pyramid, and as soon as you put him as part of your pyramid, he's going to give you three permanent victory points towards the end of the game. Whereas opposed to the cutthroat, he's going to cost you one red gemstone and one yellow gemstone. Since he's on the second level of the pyramid, he's going to cost you the amount of gemstones for being on the second level, which is the first, and the second level, cumulative, which would be a red and a yellow gemstone to play in there. But as soon as you do, you get to pick four gemstones of any color you like as your reward for playing them on the second level. Then the herbalist is going to cost you a red it's going to cost you a green and a blue since the herbalist is currently on the third level of the pyramid. But the moment you play the herbalist on the third level of the pyramid, you're going to get what's called an infinity stone. And I'll explain what those do in just a few minutes. But that'd be a reward for playing the herbalist on the third level. And then finally, the gunner on the fourth level is going to cost you a yellow, a green, a blue, and a green. But your reward is you're going to be able to pick two extra cards to add to your hand for no cost. And those can be either law cards or cards in the extra character deck, and I'll get to that also in a few moments. Don't want to get ahead of myself, but that'd be your reward for playing the gunner on that level. And then finally, cards on the fifth level, you have two choices for your rewards. A card played on the fifth level, and just a little caveat here, only character cards can be played on the fifth level. Law cards can never be placed on the fifth level. It breaks the rules for the game. But any character card placed on the fifth level is going to cost the amount of gems listed for levels one, two, three, and four plus level four again. So to play the Helmsman on the fifth level is going to be two red, one blue, a green, and an additional green since he's on the fifth level. And the reward is you either get 15 victory points instantly, or you can choose to take the rewards for levels one, two, and three cumulatively total as your reward for playing this guy on the fifth level of your pyramid. Now that you understand the concept of Viceroy and what you're trying to do, I can show you exactly how to play the game of Viceroy. The first thing you need to do when you're playing Viceroy is you need to set up the gem pile based on exactly how many players you have playing the game. And it's going to be four gems of every single color per player. So in a two-player game, you're going to have eight green, eight blue, eight red, eight yellow, all the way up to a four-player game, which will be 16 of every single color. Next thing you need to do is you need to split the character deck into two piles. You have the large pile and the small pile. And the easiest way to do this, even though the instructions tell you to do it differently, is just to count off 12 character cards from the character deck and separate this. This is going to be used to hand out to the players at the start of the game. 
and these 48 cards are going to be part of the auction stack and this is a very important point don't ever make this mistake every time a game tells you to draw a card by playing a character card as part of your pyramid you never draw cards from this stack ever it's always drawing cards from the small stack or you're drawing cards from the law deck make sure you never make that mistake because there's exactly 48 cards in this deck at all times to guarantee that the game is only played over 12 rounds because at the start of every single round you're gonna draw four cards to part to put down as part of the auction and four into 48 is 12 it will be 12 full rounds if you start taking cards out of here you're gonna mess up the flow of the game and it's not gonna quite make it a 12 round so very very important point make sure you're never drawing cards out of the large stack when you're playing character cards that give you extra card draws those card draws are always from the small deck and from the law deck and that doesn't mean that once these two stacks are empty those character cards are not going to give you any more benefits for the rest of the game. Also another very important point is that the gem pile, even though the gems are the currency for the game, it is a finite supply so once all these gems are used up or players are hoarding gems, you're not going to grab gems from outside of the game. This is the limit of the gems for the game and it is a very tight supply so make sure you're intelligently using these gems because that is part of the strategy of Viceroy of the game. Each player is also going to get a shield on which they're going to hide their money behind so no other player knows exactly how many gems they have left over. And it's also where you're going to hide your sword so none of your opponents know exactly how big your ha army happens to be. So players need to be constantly watching the other players and making sure they're remembering exactly what the other players have. Again, that's more the part of the advanced strategy for Viceroy. Once each player has their shield, each player is going to take two gems of every single color and they're going to add it to their pile behind their shield and once they've done that they've taken two of every single color they're going to randomly and again it is random they're going to pick two gems from their starting gem pile and they're going to return those two gems back to the gem pile for the bank and that is their starting gem pile for the game and that does mean that sometimes if you're unlucky you could end up just like this player did where they have no starting green gems at the start of the game that's just the random luck of how things happen and you got to make sure you're strategizing for it and planning for it because it can happen. Each player is going to get two starting character cards. And remember, always draw your cards from the small deck, never from the large deck. I just want to reemphasize that because it can mess up the game for you if you don't remember that. But each player is going to get two character cards, which are going to be hidden from the other players. I'm just playing them face up just so you can see exactly how this works for each one of the players. Once each player has their two character cards, each player is also going to get three law cards that are going to be had into their hand. And then once each player has their starting hand of cards, they need to figure out exactly which character card they're going to play first to start their pyramid. And also the auction needs to be set up so the players can start the auction for the very start of the very first round. So players can start getting extra characters to add to their hand. Each player is then going to look at their hand of five cards and they're each going to pick one character card which is going to be played down to start off their pyramid. And this character card is played for free but each player gets the benefits of playing that character card as a level one character in the pyramid immediately. So since this player played the swordsman they instantly get two victory points and then instantly get to pick two gems from the gem pile to add back to their treasury. And since this player lost their green gems at the start of the game they're going to be smart and grab two green gems as the additional re reward for placing the swordsman in the very first level of their pyramid and they're going to place that behind their screen so the other players have no idea exactly how much funds they have at any time during the game. The other player plays the colonel which is going to be a level one part of their pyramid and the reward they're going to be get is they're going to get an infinity gem. Now remember we don't take gems from outside the game ever so we're going to take an infinity gem out of the gem pile which is part of the reserves and this gem is permanently locked down as an infinity gem, again hurting our stockpile, making it our stockpile of gems a very, very tight resource that all the players need to pay attention to for the rest of the game. Once the setup is done, we're ready to play the game, and each player is going to start with round one, with the first part of round one, which is going to be the auction phase, where players need to bid and decide which one of these character cards they want to bid for, and it's going to be on a one gem basis, depending on where exactly that character card is laying in the auction pile. And what that means is to bid for the witch is going to cost you one blue gem. To bid for the factor is going to cost you one yellow gem. To bid for the veteran is going to cost you one green gem. And finally for the commander is going to be one red gem. And each player in the game is going to bid secretly by putting a bid amount in their hand. And it's always one gem only. You're not going to bid multiple. It's not going to be the highest bidder. It's one of the unique things about Viceroy that I really like. It's not the highest bidder. 
Everybody bids exactly one gem depending on the color of the character they want to purchase at that time. Each player will simply put their fists in the center and then once everybody has their fists in, everybody's going to reveal exactly what color gem they revealed. If every single player bidded a different color gem, everything is great. Each player takes a color character based on the gem they happen to bid and adds it to their hand. But of course, things can be more challenging if each player just happens to decide to bid the exact same color gem, which is going to make things go for another auction round. If multiple players happen to decide to bid and they both happen to bid the same color gems, each player is going to lose their auction gems. They're going to be sent to the reserves and neither player is going to get any one of these character cards from the action, auction pile and they're going to have to auction all over again. If they happen to auction the same colors, again, because they're really, really competing really, really hard for the same character, again, they're going to lose their amount of auction gems. And then there's going to be a third and final auction round and players either need to bid differently or if they happen to bid the exact same way again, nobody in the players who happen to bid the same gems are going to get any characters this round. Instead, they're going to get gems back as a reward. If players make it through three rounds of auctioning by continuing to keep bidding for the same gems, or if players happen to go in for the bid and one player decides to reveal an empty hand and everybody else decides to reveal gems, every single player who reveals an empty hand or every single player who made it through the third round of auctioning is going to get three gems of any color they want from the gem pile added to the reserves, plus they're going to get an additional gem for every single gear they happen to have as part of their pyramid of power. And again, they're going to get those gears by playing character cards on various levels of the pyramid. For example, the Colonel, if he's played on the second level, he's worth a gear. Players are welcome to pass on the bidding at any phase for the auction, first, second, or third round if they like, but the moment they decide to pass on the auctioning, they're out of the auctioning for the rest of the round. So you can't pass on the first round of auctioning and then bid on the second round of auctioning because once you bid, you're out of the auctioning for the rest of that turn. Once the auction part of the phase is done and each player has managed to gain the character cards that they auctioned properly for, the character cards that weren't auctioned are going to move to the top of the auction block and the character cards on the bottom are going to be refilled again from the stack of 48, the large stack of character cards, and these are going to form the character cards and be up for auction for the second round, which means on the starting from the second round and on, there's going to be some colors that are going to have multiple characters to auction for on each single auction phase. The nice bonus about that is if two players happen to go in for an auction and they both happen to auction the same color and it happens to be a color that has two character cards available for it, if both these players can agree on who gets which character card, each player can take the character cards they want if they get an amiable decision. But of course, if the players decide to fight about it and say that they both want the same character card, just like normal, the auction is going to be wasted and they're going to lose their gems and they're going to go for a second round of auctioning, just like the normal auction phase. So come to an agreement or lose your gems. Of course, this does mean in a three or a four player game, if you have three people who are bidding for the same color, that means not everybody can come to an agreement because there's only two characters to auction for. So all three of those players, or if all four of those players were bidding yellow happen to bid, they'd all lose their yellow gem bids. They'd all have to start the next round of the auctioning just like normal. Once the auction phase is over, you move to the development phase where each player is going to look at their hand of cards that they have and they're going to decide exactly which kind of cards they want to play. And they're going to play those cards face down until everybody's decided exactly which cards they want to play. Whether they want to play character cards or they want to play a law card, each player gets to pick exactly one card and one card only and place it face down. Once all the players have decided which card they want to play, they're each going to reveal their cards. They're going to add their cards to their pyramids, depending on where they want to. They're going to pay the cost for playing those characters and they're going to receive the rewards immediately for placing these characters as part of their pyramids. So for example, for playing the witch, we get to get three resources from the bank of our choice. And for playing the veteran, we also get to get three resources of our choice that we get to add to our own personal supply that's going to come from the bank. This is going to be done three times, just like with the auction phase, except if players decide to pass and not play a card, they don't get anything from the bank. They're just out of playing cards for the rest of the round. So after all the players have played their first card, players get the opportunity to play a second card if they like. Played face down. Once all the players have played their cards, they're going to reveal exactly which cards they played. They're going to add those cards to the pyramid, pay any cost that they have to pay to get those cards into play. 
and they're going to immediately get the benefits from playing those cards. This is going to go on for three times, and again, players can either play cards or decide to pass. Once they decide to pass, they can't play any more cards for the rest of that turn. Once the card play is done, you're done with the very first round. You move on to the second round where you do the exact same thing over again, starting with the auction, all three rounds of potential for the auction, move to the development phase, possibly playing three cards. This is going to go on for 12 rounds, and again, this will be timed by the large deck because you're going to flip through these cards four at a time, and eventually you're going to get to the end of this deck. Once you get to the end of this deck, that is the final turn for the game. After that, you're going to add up all the scores based on the points you got for placing your characters, where they are in the pyramid, whereas the highest score is the victor of Viceroy. There's one final really cool thing that I want to show you that I really, really like about Viceroy. It's the fact that the gemstones, even at the end of the game, they're not totally worthless. You can use those to try to turn colors in your pyramid to colors that you need them to be, which can potentially give you extra victory points. Every single gemstone you have can turn another color in your pyramid to the color of that gemstone just by taking any gemstones you have left over in your reserve and playing them on that corner to represent that that color has been changed to the color you want it to. So by doing that, in this example, I've turned this into a solid blue gem, which is going to give me extra victory points at the end of the game. Although you want to make sure that when you're building your pyramid, you're trying to get matching colors while you're building your pyramid because you're going to get victory points at the end of the game for doing it. And also, every time you complete a solo gem of a color, you're going to gain one gem from the gem pile from the bank to add to your resources. So that's also why you want to try to strive to make sure you're trying to build your pyramid in an intelligent way where your characters are going where you want them, but also so you're building these gems in a solid color so you're also getting more resources. Because as I said at the beginning, the resources for this game are very, very limited. And that's part of the challenge of the game of intelligently building your pyramid while managing your resources and trying to score the most victory points and of course, win the game. That's how you play Viceroy the game. I'm going to go ahead and clean everything up and show you exactly what Viceroy looks like when it's played as a two-player game.